All right, go ahead, Frank. Cool. Hey, everybody. My name is Frank Reno. I'm one of the customer success managers here at Simulogic, and today we're going to be talking about the Simulogic Search Job API. Um, we have a couple of different APIs within Simulogic. We have APIs for performing searches. Um, we, we used to have two APIs for performing searches. One was the Search API, and this API is being deprecated and will be removed on April 30th of 2017. However, it's being replaced by a much more robust API, the Search Job API, and that's what we're here to talk about today. Uh, we do also have APIs for managing collectors, too. Uh, so let's talk about some general API details. These, these requirements here that we're going to talk about, these apply to all of our APIs. So the first thing to note is that authentication um, must be included as an HTTP basic header. Uh, using an access ID and access key. So you can create an access ID and access key from the UI, and then you would just build an HTTP basic header using that information. API authentication calls are limited to 15 calls per minute. In order to reduce that number, um, you can use the cookies that come back. So when you have multiple requests firing off, you should use the cookies that come back from the first call you make. That will help you keep under that 15 calls per minute authentication request. There's two attributes that get included, a J session ID and an AWS ELB, and this will help you reduce the number of authentication calls that you make. Um, a few more things. Um, all API requests are limited to four calls per second or 240 requests per minute. Uh, all the data sent and received will be in JSON. And your API URL is going to depend on what region you have and where, where you log in as. So you, here you can see that if you're in, uh, if you're using service.simulogic.com to log in, then your API URL would be like this. But if you're logging into service.us2, uh, then your API would be api.us2 as well. Then this information is available in the help documentation, which a link will be provided to at the end of this presentation. Um, errors are usually returned uh, with some kind of HTTP status code and a JSON document, and the JSON document will contain more information for what went wrong. Um, some of the most common errors are uh, auth.failed, which means your authentication has failed. You should check your access ID and access key, make sure you've entered them correctly. Uh, Internal.error means something has gone wrong on the server system error. Um, unauthorized means you have incorrect um, authentication. And uh, service unavailable means that we're just not available at the moment to, to handle that request. So let's talk about the search job API. The search job API models the asynchronous behavior of a search in the Sumo Logic backend. So what you do is you create a search job, you immediately get back the ID for that search job, and then you interact with the API using that ID to get the status, is it done, is it still running, um, can I get the messages, can I get the records. The API also provides you the histogram information, so if you've seen our UI, we do have that histogram information. This API will give you back that same histogram information to show you the distribution of messages. This API is asynchronous. As I said, um, you execute a call, you get back an ID, and the system is running and doing that in the background, and you can interact with the API further until that, until that call is done. Creating a search job is quite simple. Uh, there's an endpoint, so you would use your a corresponding uh, API URL, root URL, and the endpoint in this case would be search slash jobs. Uh, and it's a post, and we do require a couple of headers for all of our API calls for the search job API. Um, you need to specify the content type and the accept as application JSON. Um, but basically what you're going to do in this post is you're just going to build a post the JSON object um, with a few keys and values, and we're going to execute that search. So the things you need to include are the query that you want to search. Any query that you can run in the UI, you can run via the API. It's, there's no limitations as far as what queries can or cannot be run. Um, the from and to or the date ranges that you want to use, uh, these values should be, can be specified in, in an ISO 8601 date format or in epic milliseconds, your choice. And the time zone parameter is just the time zone that you want to use. When you create a search job, uh, you're going to get back a few different uh, status codes depending on what, what happens. If you get back a 202, that means the search job has been created. In addition, you're also going to get back an ID to interact with that search job. 
Um, a 415 can be uh, can be sent if you don't have content type set to application JSON. So keep an eye out on that. And 400 is a bad request. This is usually a general error. Many times this will include additional information. Uh, some common things are a search that we could not parse correctly. Uh, the best thing is to take that search, run it in the UI, and then figure out what's wrong with it. It means you, you have a malformed search there. The response headers are is that you're going to get back a location. And the location is going to be the URL to further interact with that. Uh, this is a sample of what one looks like. The key is is that this ID seen here and in the href, these ID, this ID is what you're going to use to interact further with the search job to get more information. So common error reasons that can happen. Um, if you forget to specify a query, we'll tell you. Uh, your query is invalid. Again, that's some of those errors that can happen. Uh, maybe you forgot to specify the from and to parameters. Again, all those, all these parameters here that we've gone over, they are all required. Every one of these is a required parameter. Um, if you happen to do like a two time before the from time, so the date, the date logic doesn't make sense, we'll tell you about that as well. Um, if any of the above occur, the response body will contain additional information trying to tell you what is wrong. Key thing to remember, don't forget to properly escape your query. When you build a query in the UI, you can, have, you can format it in lots of ways by having it be multi-line, et cetera. Just make sure you properly escape your query um, when you're doing the API call. So once you've created a search job, the next thing you need to do is you need to check the status of that search job. And the endpoint for that is going to be the same, slash search, slash jobs, but you're going to include the ID, and this is going to be a get. And this is um, the only parameter, and it's required to interact. We need to know what job you want to interact with. Um, the response will look something like this. Um, you'll have a state that tells you where it, is, where it is in the search. You'll get some information about how, what's the message count, what's the histogram information, are there any errors or warnings, and how many total records were returned, right? So this is raw message count. And if you're doing an aggregation query, then you'll have the record count. So some states that you can see is not started. We haven't started the search job yet. Uh, gathering results means it's still running. There's, there's, this information will be available. Again, it's asynchronous, and you can interact, but your result set is not complete. That's what the state is trying to tell you. Done gathering results means we're done, and your state is valid, and you can start to uh, get those information out. You're ready to get that, and you will get the complete results. And canceled is there to tell you that uh, your job has been canceled out. So when you, again, some of those things you're going to have those fields you saw. Message count, again, that's just the count of the raw log messages. Record count is the aggregates. Important to note that if you're doing a non-aggregate query, in other words, a, a search that does not use an aggregate operator like sum or count or average or percentile, then you're not going to see this field. This field only shows you if your query is, in fact, doing an aggregate operator. Pending errors, pending warnings, and the histogram buckets are not cumulative. So every request will return the information found since the previous request. That means the client has to ensure that they store these if they must be remembered. So just keep that in mind that because these are not stored, um, you're going to get the current execution since the last request. The client, you may need to store that information should you need to preserve that information. So now that, we've, now that we've gotten our job and we can see that it's done, the next thing we want to do is we actually want to get the data. And there's two things you'd want to get potentially. You may want to get the messages or you may want to get the records. So to get the messages, um, again, it's that same base, uh, base URL, so search jobs, the ID, and messages. And there's a couple of required parameters. Offset is the starting location. In other words, start at this location. And limit is how many messages you want to return. So this is how you paginate through the result sets. Um, as you can see, though, the maximum value for limit is 10,000 messages. So if you have more than 10,000 messages, you will have to execute multiple calls to get the complete data set. Uh, this is a sample of what things look like. Uh, there's really two fields that you're going to see. Fields is just the fields that are described by it. So in other words, it's, it's the, the, the column headers uh, of the data. And this will be an order in which it would be displayed in the UI. And messages is going to be a map. And there's gonna be, it's a list of maps. And there's one map for every message. Um, so the raw message will show up in that section in this case. 
Paging through records is exactly the same. The difference is instead of slash messages, you use slash records. Again, records is only relevant if you're doing an aggregation query. Messages is raw log level messages. Records represent your aggregated data set. It's the same thing. You're limited to 10,000 records. Um, there is an offset and a limit that must be specified in order to interact with this. Uh, again, the structure is exactly the same. You'll have the fields to tell you the column headers, and you'll have records, which would be a list of maps that correspond to one for each record. So, and again, the keys can be accessed because you have the fields, you know what the keys are. Once you're done, as good housekeeping, um, you should delete the search job. Uh, in the end, it will be timed out on, the, on, on its own, but it's always best practice to do that housekeeping. Uh, doing this is as simple as posting, a, a, doing a delete to search jobs in the search job ID. That will tell the system that you're done, you've gathered over all the information you need, and we will delete that job from the back end. So let's go ahead and do a quick demo on this. So I'm just going to use Postman. Um, Postman is a simple way of interacting with the REST API. Um, we'll show you exactly what we've done. So we're doing an API call, and in this case, the Sumo account I'm using is in our uh, service.sumologic.com region. So I have my corresponding URL here. Um, again, this is the base URL, and in this case, I'm going to post to search jobs. It is a post because I'm trying to create a search job. Notice the headers I've set. I have my required content type, my required accept, and my authorization header, which is using my access ID and access key, uh, base64 encoded. It's just the basic authentication header here. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create this. Oh, I also have a body. This is, uh, again, the body of what I'm going to post. Again, I've specified my query. We're just going to look for error, and we're going to do a simple count by source category. So this is an aggregate query. I will get back messages and records. Uh, I'm just going to look at an hour um, uh, from today, from midnight to 110, about an hour and 10 minutes. And I'm going to do the time zone as PST. So I'm going to go ahead and send this. And you'll notice that I got back my response. It looks exactly like the one we saw in the example. I have a URL for further interacting with this, and I have the search job ID, which is the most critical point. So I'm going to go ahead, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go interact with that job. So I'm just going to do a get request to search slash jobs with that ID. This is going to give us the status. We can see that the state is done gathering results. Here is all the histogram information. I collapse that. I can see that I got uh, you know, 12,000 messages with a record count of one. I would expect a record count of one because if you remember, my query is just doing a simple count. So there's only going to be one record returned. And no errors and no warnings that I need to worry about. So now we're ready to further interact with this. Uh, let's go ahead and get some of those messages. So I'm just going to do messages and we're going to do um, offset equals zero to start at the beginning and limit equals one. We just want to get back one message for this case. So you can see that there's the structure we get. I'm going to collapse this for a second. Again, there's our fields and our messages. Fields represents all the column headers. So this is giving me back all the data, all the extracted fields that match that. So I can see that information. And again, this is just for the messages. So there's going to be more. It's not the aggregate results. And let's go ahead and collapse that. And then here's our messages. Notice I do get back a map, but it is just uh, one object because I specified just give me one. And I can see all the different values uh, for that search. And this is the raw message level information. To get the record information that we know we have, again, it's just a matter of changing um, the endpoint from, rec from messages to records. We'll do the same thing. Notice I get back the same structure. I have a fields object. This shows me my fields. And if you remember my query, my query was a count by source category. So I expect one column to be the source category and the other column to be the count, the number of uh, messages that occurred um, that match that query. And here we can see that I have my records object and there's just one entity in there, but I do have a count and I do have a source category. So I can see that only my Apache error logs contain the word error for that time frame. 
And that's really kind of the demo uh, of just how to interact with the search job API. Again, it's a pretty standard REST API. Uh, its biggest thing is that it is an asynchronous API, so you can interact with it, you can control um, how, you're, how you're querying, and then you interact with the state. You can interact with the results while they're being processed. You can actually see data and see data while it's still running, or you can wait until it's complete and then interact with it further. And again, that's all determined by the state if we go back to this search here. So again, this getting that data. State is what controls that. That tells you where the job is and what the status of that job is. Let's go back here. So just a few things to share that are worth sharing. We do have some SDKs built that are wrappers for, these, for this API and for our collector API. We do have a Java client library that is available on Maven Central. Uh, you can go to this GitHub URL to see all the information on how to interact with it and all the documentation is there. We also have a Python SDK that you can use to interact with if you're building Python applications. And a few additional resources that are just good for you to have. Um, first of all, I've included a link here to our documentation. This documentation covers off on everything that we've talked about uh, today. And should you ever be using our API, have any problems, have any questions, uh, feel free to email that api at sigmalogic.com and we'll, uh, we'll be happy to help.